All right, hello everyone. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about deploying Swift on a scale up file system. Uh, to begin, uh, we have me, Thiago da Silva, and Bill Owen from IBM. I'm from Red Hat. Um, just a primer on OpenStack Swift for those that don't know. Uh, OpenStack Swift is a highly available, distributed, eventually consisted uh, object store. So it's great for uh, uh, organizations that want to um, store their unstructured data, such as uh, video, movies, uh, your x-rays, you know, for your uh, uh, medical uh, on uh, uh, scale-out storage system. Uh, the Swift architecture is highly uh, modularized and uh, it can scale to hundreds and uh, thousands of nodes. Uh, it's uh, basically made up of four different modules. Uh, the proxy, module or the proxy servers, which uh, can be a, a number of uh, servers, and it's the public gateway to uh, the, the RESTful API. And you also have the account servers, the container servers, and the object servers. Uh, all this uh, are, can really make up uh, thousands of nodes distributed uh, on a cluster. Um, as part of the Juno release, uh, the new feature in Swift was the addition of storage policies. Storage policies allows you to choose uh, not only how you store your data, but where you store your data. So before, you could only uh, uh, have one method uh, of storing your data. So for example, you could configure your cluster only for two times or three times replication. And you could only, uh, you had to define where that data was stored, you know, let's say across our hard drives. With storage policies, you can define uh, multiple ways of storing your data. Maybe you have data that you want to replicate three times, maybe you have data that you want to replicate two times, uh, and you can, or even in the future, uh, you can have data that is erasure coded. Well, you can also now, with the storage policies, uh, define a set of data to be stored on a scale up file system. Uh, now, how, how is this accomplished? How was storage policies uh, uh, implemented? Uh, Digging a little bit deeper into the Swift architecture, uh, Swift communicated, or the proxy servers, communicated with the object servers through, uh, uh, not communicated with, but used uh, this idea of a hashing object ring to define where to store the, the data. So you had only one object ring that the proxy server uh, uh, queried to get the, the, the list uh, of servers to talk to, and with storage policies, you now have multiple object rings. So before you had only one, and that's why you could only define one place, and now you have multiple ones. So you can have two or three or, or as many as you want. And uh, so you, in this example, we have uh, one to store three replicas, and we have another object ring to store your clustered file system. And now uh, Bill is going to talk about how to deploy on a scale -out file system. Thanks, Diago. So the question is, why would you want to deploy Swift on a scale-out file system, using the scale-out file system for the back end? There's a number of benefits. First, if you already have an existing scale-out file system, you can throw um, Swift on top of that and begin using it immediately. Especially with the new storage policies, you can point one of your Swift storage policies to the scale-out file system and make use of that storage. Also, it gives you a single data plane for managing object storage as well as your scale-out file system storage. Further, because you've got a scale-out file system that you're building this upon, you can leverage the features of that scale-out file system. Features like snapshots, encryption, compression, et cetera. Automatic tiering, if you have it, for moving um, with different classes of storage, for moving objects from one class of storage to another, and tape integration. So you've done that, but there's still something missing. What's missing? There's no easy way to access the object data from the file system. So for example, this is an, the top line is an existing URL to an object through the Swift object API. You've got an account, a container, and an object hierarchy at the end of the URL. Well, in the file system, it's located at a much more complex um, directory structure within the file system. And you can see the name of the, of the object itself is not even the file name. It's the timestamp when the object was created. So the data is there, but it's very difficult to access. 
Swift on file gives us a way to get to that data in an easy way. So Swift on file is a disk file implementation, and it's used to, shore, used to store objects in a scale out file system and make them available from the file system as well as from the user interface. So it allows creating objects with the Swift API and then accessing them through the file system API, or vice versa. Maps a URL to a file system path. It's deployed as a storage policy. So with, with Swift on file, we have the same initial URL, but you can see within the file system, it's located in a much more human interpretable or much more easy to access way so that your applications can access the objects directly through the file interface or through the REST API. So we'll go through three use cases. Um, the, first case, the first use case is dealing with video transcoding. So in this use case, um, you've got some video files that have been uploaded to your object store. You're able to do background proce processing of those. You've got file-based applications that access the videos through the file system interface, do whatever processing they need to, and then the processed objects are available from the object interface when you're done. Another use case that's similar is analytics. So the idea here is that you've got an object feed into your object store. Maybe you're grabbing data from Twitter and using that, putting that in the object store, and you want to do something like run Hadoop against that. Without um, Swift on file, your Hadoop job would have to use the object interface to pull the data back out moving the data, taking much more time, and creating multiple copies of the data. With Swift on file, your applications can access those objects directly, so you can run Hadoop directly on the objects in the file system, not needing to copy data, not needing to move data, so things happen in a much more efficient way. A second use case is scientific collaboration. This is, um, the idea here is that you're ingesting objects through the file interface and then publishing them through the object interface. So in this case, many, many of the corporations that we interact with or universities we interact with have um, file-based analytics programs where they're processing huge amounts of data. When they're done processing, they want to publish some or all of that data to external consumers. The applications are suited for a file system, so they, they run very efficiently there. But what they don't do is make the results available easily through any kind of interface. So the solution is, again, Swift on file. With Swift on file, you can continue to run your analytics using the file system interface. But then with um, the object interface, you're able to publish the results as a URL, um, immediately share those results with others outside of the organization, and secure that with an um, authentication system like Keystone. All right, Tiago? That's right. So just to summarize, Swift on File um, enables you to quickly deploy uh, your object stored on top of a scale-out file system, uh, for example, Gluster or GPFS. Um, it also allows you uh, to have a single system that uh, you can access your data as both objects or files, uh, no matter what kind of application you have, if you need uh, to deploy as, as a RESTful interface over a RESTful interface, or to have uh, applications that access those uh, files over a file interface. And the great thing is that you can extend an existing Swift cluster. You don't have to deploy a whole uh, new Swift cluster. You can, through storage policies, you can extend a, an existing Swift cluster that you might already have. Um, so what's next? What's going on? Um, uh, during the design summit, we're going to be talking more about Swift on file uh, on Friday. And uh, there's a lot more work that we want to get done. So we invite everyone to join us there. And uh, do come join us. Uh, we have a lot of information on our IRC channel, GitHub, and uh, Launchpad uh, project. Uh, any questions? <laughs>